All right, today is the day. We are jumping back and gonna finish up a few things that we kind of left undone and adding a few new things that kind of are associated with that. And that being those rain gutters, if you remember, we left those kind of unfinished because we ran out of epoxy. Well, we've got epoxy again, so we are gonna do some lamination on the backside of those rain gutters. But while we have the tub off and upside down, we are also going to um, put a little bit of a duct or channel extension of the intake duct for the intercooler on the passenger side. And if you remember, we already did that extension on the driver's side, which is the incoming air. We are gonna laminate the bottom side of those after we build the intercooler duct extension. But anyway, no more talking about it. Let's just jump in, take a look. But before we really get going, I need to quelch some fears people have of uh, my addiction to ice cream. Although I do enjoy the ice cream, I don't have an addiction, so to say. It is that just that these containers are totally recyclable and I can use them over and over. So this is a collection of a year's worth of ice cream that you see me using in all these polyethylene buckets. So for $3 worth of ice cream, I get a $1 bucket to mix epoxy and $2 worth of ice cream. So with that done, let's move on. Now we're gonna put this intercooler back together and start getting the duct for it, or a way to divert some of the incoming air across into the intercooler. Now previously I had built these brackets that were part to hold the fuel tank that we built before. But we also have a little bit of interference problem with this tire in full compression. I think that it's almost close enough that we wouldn't have to worry about it, but now that we're not using it to support the fuel tank, we're gonna trim it off and use it just for our intercooler. Now the intercooler was originally mounted with these uh, stainless steel brackets, another episode if you wanna jump back and find that. And this has a couple of holes to support a duct that will go to the bottom of the intercooler. But this third bracket that was gonna go onto this aluminum support, I'm taking it off and uh, repurposed that bracket. Took the end that we trimmed off and put it back on, welded it in place because we also need a little bolt hole in the tip of that as well to support our new feature here. So we're going to build this uh, diverter, this duct, out of sheet metal just like we did the other side. Form it out of sheet metal and use that to do our laminations across and then we'll just peel it back out when it's all done, cured. So we have part of that incoming duct created by a piece of laminate that we created that had a foam core on the back or a foam core polyethylene sheeting. And we're gonna form this sheet metal to butt up against that piece. I've taken it upstairs and uh, put it on the brake and bent a couple of pieces. Now I need to uh, shave back that foam core so that when we do our lamination on the backside, the epoxy means epoxy rather than just terminating at a foam core edge. I had to find a bit of trimming there. Now we're going to get it finalized, clamped in position. And at first I was going to uh, put some peel ply in there and use that as a release so it wouldn't get epoxy onto the intercooler. But in the end, I actually decided to just take the intercooler out of the way and support it with some, our new form with a cardboard box you'll see here in just a little bit. But out of these two or three pieces of sheet metal, I'm just taping them together with our um, aluminized tape. And I just switched in. I'm gonna clamp this thing into position and leave enough room so that I can lap my fiberglass laminations onto the existing piece and then out onto our form. So once I get these pieces um, clamped into place, our last piece of tape, filling that little gap joint in the end there. And then I will be pulling out the intercooler because we are almost ready. And take some PV, PVA releasing agent, coat that thing so that we can get it loose in the end. As you see, the intercooler is gone. I got a little kind of a cardboard box found with about the right length to hold that thing in position. And you didn't even see the edit there. It was so smooth and transitionless that you didn't notice that that was the next day. The PVA is 
dried and weird start in a lamination. Now I'll be building up about four layers on these pieces. And I'll be using a mix of four and a half ounce S glass, plain weave, and then a twill fiberglass as well to catch some of the real hard corners. The hard corners being that four sided end piece there. I need to build that end piece up a little bit thicker too, because there's also going to be a bolt that goes through the end of that into our bracket that holds the end of the intercooler. We'll also hold the end of this form. Also want to make sure I have four layers where this new piece that we're building right here joins our existing lamination up there because we want a good strong joint where these two come together. Just a matter of building up our layers. Like I said, we will try to get four layers completely on this whole thing. Letting them, of course, lap off to the edge. We will just trim that once it is cured. Much easier than trying to just run your lamination to the edge of your form. And then you get kind of a jagged edge. And in the end, these pieces weren't laying down really good on the corner. So I took a piece of a real fine satin weave. I've done this before. That satin weave kind of a bonds on, holds everything tucked in nicely. Next day, once the thing's cured, trim off all that loose stuff. We can get a nice clean edge with our uh, saw. Take our prop out and peel out our form. That piece done. Now, while we were getting these pieces done, we'd figured, hey, we're going to be flipping this tub upside down to laminate the backside. I might as well finish these rain gutters. Now, we formed these rain gutters out of uh, some pre laminated pieces. And so they couldn't make the corners. So what we're doing now is just building a little bit of form to uh, create the new corners. With the tub out upside down now, we're going to go ahead and uh, finish the laminations that we started many weeks ago when I ran out of epoxy and couldn't do the final laminations on the backside. We, of course, got the, the gutters bonded in from the backside, but they weren't fully laminated in place. Of course, the bonding would hold them in place, but we're just going to put these to stiffen it. I made the gutters themselves just a slightly lighter than they needed to be. And now once I put two or three layers of laminations to help uh, adhere them to the roof, they will also stiffen them up by adding a few more layers to their uh, thickness as well. Actually going to three or four layers on these corners where we just added that little piece of metal to make our final transition around the bins. And I will also Laminate all the way up the side of our uh, carbon fiber spar here that we have to stiffen our A-pillars. And we're just going around, like I said, two, three layers on the main gutters and then at the joints, four layers, both sides. And then we'll let this thing cure, trim it off later on. And then again, while we have this thing upside down, we're going to go back and laminate the bottom sides of these intake ducts. Now this, of course, is the driver's side, the air intake. So we need to uh, scuff it up, get all the releasing agent off of there, and then we'll start our lamination. Now most lamination in here is to uh, join these pieces to the tub, the outer skin of the tub and the bulkhead. So we put in about four layers on those joints to uh, bond our new parts onto the existing panel of the bulkhead, like I said, and at least three layers out onto the flat surfaces. Again, using plain weave on most of the surfaces. And then when I got this hard 90 degree corners, switch to a twill fabric so that I can make that bend without a joint at the corner. So now you can see that on the original lamination we did on our form, we had three or four layers there, and now we're putting another three or four on the back. So we'll have eight layers on here that should be plenty stiff to hold this in position 
There will be some other pieces added to this, of course, and it will be supported inside by some uh, ductwork going to the turbochargers here. And then we're switching over to the other side that we just created, our intercooler uh, diverter. Same thing, putting some layers into the corners to join this new piece to our uh, the skins of the tub. And then of course, uh, layers going out onto the structure that we just built as well to, uh, like I said, create that eight layers, make this thing stiffer. Of course, this piece is supported not only at the tub, but then goes out to that bracket and bolts it as well. So it didn't need to be really that strong at all. It's more of just a, uh, like I said, a diverter rather than any kind of a structural piece. And here it is finished nice and hard. As you can see, plenty stiff, a little bit of flex there, but that, that'll be supported. And also we have a cure on our rain gutters and that's complete. Well, there you go. We've got some of those little details or I should say extension of the structure done on the tub. That's gonna allow us to pretty soon be moving on with just adding the big bulky laminations to build up the strength in that tub. The last thing of course is kind of revisiting again. We'll go back to building that tunnel. Remember we built our little mock-up of the transfer case. Well, we'll go back to that mock-up and actually put that back into place, build our tunnel form and do that lamination coming up here pretty soon. But that is next steps, next videos. But that is next step in another video. Anyway, thanks for stopping by today on this video. Come back, see us again.